Hello. <laughs> Hope everyone's well. The few who know of me, or who have. I've been around for a bit now. Sat watching the IPL cricket. And having a cold one on a Friday afternoon. If you're here, are you looking, you know. I don't necessarily watch IPL cricket, but I've always had a cold one on a Friday afternoon. Sunshine, which is strange, because it's been absolutely battering it down. And 50, 50 mile an hour winds. That's Cumbria for you. I love it. I love being up here. In fact, in the last... For the, those who know me, for the last uh, couple of months, I've spent quite a lot of time away. Sunderland. I had a week in Sunderland. Difficult people, but not in any way is that against them as people. It was just that they're living in different circumstances, aren't they, than the rest of us. I go back to the same old bullshit, you know, Northumberland, Durham, Lancashire, wherever you want, you can drive and see thousands and thousands of acres of land with nothing on but a few cows, lambs, sheep. Farms of 150 acres, 200, 300 acres, then people crammed into high rises. Is that a reason why people are angry? I don't want to go on about that. But that is the one point I've noticed over the last few months. And I had to go to a funeral in, in Sunderland, and I then took a small holiday of Beamish. Yeah, what wonderful place. Uh, yeah, yeah, and they just finished the 50s houses that I was brought up in with the police house next door. Uh, and and, and the Beamish is... Uh, uh, oh, Holy Island, sorry. Yeah. Then this farm. I spent two days on there. In a crazy place, really. Uh, a caravan site where I got four nights in a caravan. A decent caravan. For £49, I could have had five in there. My whole family could have been there, you know, if I was, if I was younger and, you know, the, the kids could sleep in small beds. For £49, and yet they were charging more for beer and food. In fact, if you sat a family of four down, two adults, two parents, you know, and, and their two children in a 49 pound caravan for four nights and had a beer each and a meal each, it would have cost you more than the caravan. <laughs> it's a fucked up system, isn't it? Anyway, I'm going to go on about today. I don't know how long it'll take. I actually don't know if I've done it before because I do think there is a little bit of dementia, forgetfulness, whatever, slipping in. I'm trying to keep it real. You know, by reading, by listening, by... I have my own ways of doing things anyway. But I want to tell you about where I live and, and the difference I've seen over the last... I've been here six and a half years now. When you think about the times... And I'll tell you what... Before I carry on, all the YouTube videos that they blocked, every single video they have blocked, YouTube, have now been the watchable again. I think most of them, I actually put a privacy on them. So that, you know, I, I put it on in desperation in the end because YouTube were, were blocking me from talking. They, they you know, they... They didn't agree with what I had to say. That's the way I see it anyway. And so I actually made everything private so that they couldn't keep pulling up these reasons why certain videos were banned. But anyway, they, I can go on my YouTube channel now and I can see thousands of videos. I don't. 
<laughs> and I don't look so much at what was going on. But it was going on. But I think 90% of them are actually blocked. I'm going to re-release them. I'm just going to make them so everyone... It's nice to know they're there and they didn't destroy them. You know, I'm going to just take that privacy off them. I don't think any are going to be very interesting to many people. But be interesting about this guy's life and the shit I went through. You know, and, and the way things were and how difficult it was at that time. And I'm not saying there aren't difficult times around now. And I approach them in a different way or, or whatever. But I'm actually a pensioner now anyway. So, however I get long, however long I get to live this one. Because I'll be honest with you, before I say what I've come on this channel to say about, yeah, I've seen four or five of my mates in the last few, let's say last year, who've planned for the future, become very poorly. I'm 66 now, nearly 67. And yeah, they're the same age as me, or just a little bit older. And they have become very poorly. That planning for the future needs to be backed up, really. With a, you could never plan it, but, excuse me, but some kind of lifestyle that, especially if you've been in the building trade, that you're going to actually get past. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyway, I'm going back to what I'm saying now. Right, I've been here six and a half years. This place is unreal. I'm not going to tell you exactly where I am. How the f I care not. Anyone knows now. But I live in a complex of under 20 bungalows. It's a small complex of, of bungalows. In a small village in West Cumbria, on the outskirts of Cockermouth, Workington. It is the Lake District, it's classed as a Western Lake District. Western Lake District, there's, I think at the moment, three, there's probably three empty ones. There has, during COVID, been up to six or seven empty. You know, under 20, yeah. People looking for homes. Beautiful. Small, tiny, they will, you know. This is the lounge. It is small, but it's the old 60s stuff. There's plenty of room. Kitchen's enough for me and, you know, if I had a partner. There's one bedroom, some are two bedrooms. Uh, it's not disability friendly and I struggle massively now with my knees and such. It's supposed to be, it used to be classed as sheltered housing, it's now been changed to what's known as, uh, I love the way these housing associations getting back to gateway can change these words, I, they call it now independent living. Because there are people, I would say on here, uh, Out of the 15 residents, there will be probably 50% over 80, well into the 80s, some, some into the 90s. When I arrived, there was a lady in 99 and there was other people way into the 80s. And that's what I'm trying to say. What I've noticed is that I think I've probably lost in the last seven years 10 friends. I was the youngest when I arrived. That was like, God, 57, was it? No, no, I'm 67 now. So I've been here seven years. So I was 60 years old, just over, when I couldn't find anywhere. And, 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 and these people gave me a chance and I came to live up here. And uh, yeah, I was 60 ish. There was a lady. The majority were over 80. It was a totally different. It was wonderful, actually. It was almost like my mum's age. 
be downstairs. There were people who were so unobtrusive. They, they, were, they were so friendly, they were so open. The place was an absolute dream to live in. Yeah? God, I wish I could say that now. But since the uh, actual, shall we say, structure of the company, the staff that worked for me have changed. It's been unbelievable. The last year on here has changed significantly. But I have almost become the youngest here. I haven't, because there are four or five in the eighties right, still. But they've moved in people younger than me with such a different opinion on life. I seem to slip in so well with the 80-year-olds that Ruida and I arrived. I'm having to slip in now with 62-year-olds who, to me, T, appear to be totally fucking off their heads, man. And I don't mean on this, that, or the other. I mean in their opinions about life. Now, the whole place has been... It's an incredible place because it's a tiny little dot of under 20 bungalows in an extremely affluent area. Yeah? Surrounded by lawyers, vets, doctors. That's the kind of properties that are surrounded. You know, and there are a few, you know, million pound homes surround it as you take a trek off into the the town below. <laughs> a multi-million pound homes on your way down, believe me. But the housing association, I suppose, has had to take on, they've had to fill, you know, the empty places. But I can't believe the difference in the people who've moved in. The aggression of these people. The, the actual, I don't know where, the simplicity of these people in the sense that they acknowledge they've got somewhere to live, but they don't acknowledge the area. This is the Lake District. I can walk out my front door there, look out there, and I've got one of the most beautiful views you can imagine. Yeah? Incredible. I can't believe how lucky I am. I walk out my back door, I've got lambs. You know, young lambs just been bred. It's incredible. The communal gardens, and yet the resentment, the hatred, the God, they need to fuck off back to where I've just been you now for my beautiful cousin's funeral. Places like Sunderland, you know, where where the forced to live in tenement blocks or, you know, high-rise shite. Even though I must admit, Sunderland had the most amazing seaside I've seen in a long time. See him, is it? See him? Beautiful. I really enjoyed my walk on there. <laughs> but, but I put Sunderland in no different a bracket than Preston, where I came from. Manchester outskirts, you name it, it's throughout the whole northwest, north, Scotland, whatever. But what I'm saying is, we've got this like management now that I'm lost. There's been a few things occurred on this small estate in the last year that I've, you know, ended up with. This is no exaggeration. If you know me, you know me. This is no exaggeration. There have been evenings on here of under 20 small bungalows in a very affluent village. I've been two or three police cars on here. Two or three ambulances on here. Yeah, it's been mind-blowing. Yeah, you know, absolutely.
server out, right? <laughs> Most of it has been for very little other than accusations of someone scratching someone's car. Or, 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 or what, you know, that, I'm talking that, I mean, it's not a nice thing to have your car scratched. I understand that. But this is how pitiful it has been, and how petty it's been. And the fact that I bought my curtains some mornings and some days, and I've seen three police cars in the little entrance to what I call my little village. Yeah? That's not healthy. It's not fucking healthy for me, let me tell you that now. You know what I mean? I've seen situations where, you know, I looked out my curtains four in the morning and there's been two ambulances. And one of the old guys that I know, he's had an issue during the day. He lives here. He's been brought home at 4 a.m. in the morning. He's not capable of looking after himself anyway. He's in his late 70s, he's had serious issues. A wonderful, talented, you know, intellectual man in his day, but he needs help and support. Doesn't need bringing home at 4 a.m. in the fucking morning uh, by two paramedics who have no choice of what they're doing. They probably isn't their bed for But this is what's been going on. I've, I've had to make calls for certain residents, for certain friends, because they've had issues. I fucking hell, man, you know? The questions they ask you before they send an ambulance out are horrendous. You know, I have issues myself. When I get a 79-year-old guy who's on the floor, I've gone to his house and all that, and they say to me, take his, undo his shirt, put your hands on his chest. I say, I can't do that, I can't do that. They would have that much, it just hurt me. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to generalise this. I am generalising it, but I'm not trying to get to them. This is, the system's breaking down, isn't it? You know, the amount of people I've seen in this small complex go since COVID with one issue. They've had issues mixed with the one issue they've gone for. The one issue they've gone for is dementia. I know it's fucking Workington. I know it's the outskirts of West Cumbria and all Sellafields down the road. And a lot of people blame that. But let me tell you this, it's about fucking confinement. It's been locked away. Covid fucked a lot of people up on here. But the actual staff at the moment, well, that have been brought in, I think it's part of a social cleansing power. I don't think they know that. I don't think the staff I'm talking about think, oh, we need to fucking socially cleanse this wank or anything else like that. I think the people who've been put into a position who, let's say, are quite vulnerable people in their own right and accept what they've got as, you know, shall we just say, a uh, responsibility. Anyway, I'm over in the fridge. There's not much more, apart from a reduced steak. What's up, heaven, for me, T? They're back garden, hello. It's usually lambs, isn't it, at this time of year? Tiny little kitchen. I've got me, the gone here's growing. The art board there, I play on a lot. I play a lot of darts. Don't cook as much as I used to cook. But you know what I mean? I'm at a stage in life now where I need to let people know that, you know, I've been the luckiest guy in the world. The luckiest guy in the world. I'm crammed in like a sardine box. Those are my memories. And millions of others. Talk to worry about the red squirrels I love. Because of this area. 
out my window. The friends, the family, you know. The bedroom which sees no action. <laughs> but the simple fact that I'm here purely and simply to say one thing. And I'm going to leave you after this. Is that the generations below me, and I know we always see change, or we struggle to see the change. And with, you know, fucking IT, and I mean, the way things have changed has been incredible. It's, an, it's disgusting. I could go on for it forever, but the people who've just moved in here in the last 12 months, and I'm talking. Ten, seven or eight units of people. They're not me. They're not how I was in life. Is it time that's changed me? Or have we got Thatcher's children? No, we're only different from me from five or six years. We're totally different values. I have no idea. Take it easy anyway. I hope you're all well.